In our last video, we learned how to find the confidence interval for a population variance by hand, showing all the steps. And then we took the square root of the numbers for the population variance to get the standard deviation. So you take the square root of both of numbers, and then there you have it. Now the question becomes, what does this mean? Well, you're talking about the standard deviation of what? So always pays to go back and look back at the problem. And it was talking about the GRE verbal reasoning score, see that? And what the standard deviation is. So we think that the population standard deviation of GRE verbal scores is somewhere between 72.519 and 192.518. So that's what we'll say. We are 95% confident that the true proportion, sorry, the true population standard deviation of all GRE verbal scores is between 72.5 and 192.43. Now, I highlighted this yellow part here because I wanted to say what I was doing. What I'm doing there is I'm explaining what sigma is in words using the context of the situation. You don't want to just say, I'm 95% confident sigma is in there because you have to explain what sigma is. It's the population standard deviation of all, in this case, GRE verbal scores. Also note that you're going to add units if it's appropriate. This particular problem, it wasn't appropriate. But if it was inches or feet or degrees or whatever, you'd throw that in. Now, it's not appropriate to try to use a margin of error argument to find um, the point estimate. Now, what am I talking about there? Let me go back to section 9.2 one second. Here we go. This was the last problem in section 9.2. You could see that you could compute your point estimate of your average right here using the low number and the high number. You'd add them up and divide by two and you'd get the middle, right? Because it was the center of your interval. But that's not going to happen with the problems we're on. Let me scroll back to it. Oop, there we have it. And here's why. The point estimate which is S, which was 105.446. We found it earlier. We found it a page ago um, using our calculator right there, 105.446. It's actually closer to the left-hand side than to the right-hand side. And I've drawn a little picture here for you. So here's 105, but it's not in the center. It's over on the left-hand side. And that's because the distribution used to build this interval is skewed right. It's the chi-square distribution. Chi-square distributions are always skewed right. They're not symmetrical, right? not symmetric, like the Z and the T are, right? Like Z and T, right? The Z distribution, T distribution, they're symmetrical. The chi-square, not so much. And that means that your interval is always skewed right. It's never symmetric. So you're never going to be able to find the point estimate, right? So the point estimate is never in the center, the, the exact center, let's put it that way. It's in the middle, but not the exact middle. It's not right down the center. It's a little bit farther over. And it's always to the left because the distribution is always skewed right that built it. All right, so the company claims that the standard deviation of all GRE verbal reasoning tests was 70. Does the confidence interval appear to support or contradict their claim? So let's just pretend they claim it's 70. So their claim is that sigma equals 70. Okay, the interval, however, doesn't really support that. It contradicts that. And just for the record, by the way, when we ask questions like this, don't answer yes. <laughs> a support or contradict is not a yes or no question. You have to choose support or contradict. So contradicts their, the company's claim because 70 is outside, or let me see, below the entire interval. Now, let me just make a couple notes. What if they had claimed um, something else? What if they had claimed that sigma was greater than 70? If they claim sigma was greater than 70, then the interval supports them because then interval would support the claim because would support because the entire interval is above 70. If they had claimed that sigma equals 100, 
than the interval supports because because um, 100 is inside the interval. If they claim that, um, I don't know, sigma is above 100, how about that, sigma is above 100, greater than 100, then the interval contradicts because, because 100 is inside the interval not, um, or excuse me, the interval is not entirely because the interval is not entirely above 100. All right, what does this mean for you? It means you're going to have to pay really close attention to the English, right? So was 70 means equals 70. Was is just past tense for is, and that's equals. If they claim greater than 70, that would be this one. If they claim was 100, that would be the next one. If they claim greater than 100, less than 100, you're going to have to pay really close attention to the words that they're using. And the words that they're using will give you their claim, and then you determine whether your interval supports that. So they're claiming it, it is 70. My interval contradicts that because my interval doesn't have 70 in it. If they claim it is 100, sure, my interval supports that because 100 is in my interval. If they claim it's greater than 70, sure, my whole interval is greater than 70, so that's fine. But if they claim greater than 100, no, my interval contradicts because the entire interval is not above 100. It all depends. What if they claim less than 200? So let me, let me throw that one in there. If they make a claim that sigma is less than 200, less than 200, then your interval supports because the entire interval is below, comma, then interval supports because the entire interval is below 200, right? So it all depends on what they're claiming and what verb they're using. Are they using is, greater than, or less than? And what I'm really setting you up here for is chapter 10 and 11 and 12, when you're going to start using intervals and other things to try to support or contradict claims that are made. All right, let's stop right here, and then we'll pick up for the last question in this in the last video. So I'll see you back here then.